Welcome to Pastor Warren Kelly's podcast, Jesus Set Me Free. It is written where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty, and it is written that Jesus came to set the captives free. This show, Jesus Set Me Free, is hosted by Pastor Warren Kelly and his brother, Daniel Lopez. And now, here we go with Jesus Set Me Free. Hallelujah. Amen. I made it. We are here. I made made it. it. (laughs) We made it. We're sorry we're late. I got hung up in that Miami traffic, (laughs) but I'm so thankful that my brothers are showing me grace tonight. We just want to welcome you to another wonderful podcast. I am Pastor Warren Kelly, along with my brother. Pastor Greg Barrett. Yes, yes. And we got Noah in the back over there. We got Noah. Let's get him out here. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 So... Uh, would you open us up in prayer, Pastor? Yeah. Father God, we thank you for this time together, brothers in Christ. Um, we uh, pray, Holy Spirit, that you guide us and direct us tonight, that we uh, share some gold nuggets that will help people set them free. You know, the Word says that the Word is the truth, and it will set you free. So, Father God, we thank you for that. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're in our presence right now. And we thank you, Lord, that we got all got here safe, <laughs> especially Pastor Warren. And we pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I just got back from wonderful Miami, Florida. Woohoo. And that was a... I try to avoid it, wonderful Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, place is something else. Uh, I tell you what, uh, you, really, you really work on your long suffering down there. I bet. Yeah, I work on it sure. hard here. Yeah, in Fort Pierce, yeah, <laughs> I'm in Vera right now, but Fort Pierce. <sighs> and last week we missed a show because uh, I was in um, Baltimore, and Brother Danny got hung up just like he got hung up today. And uh, you know, uh, we're here today. Yeah, we're here rejoicing. Amen. How are you today? I'm great. Doing good. Yeah, I am. Praise God. Yes. Yes, uh, indeed. Yes, our God is awesome. Got to meet with my my brothers this morning for our ministerial prayer meeting and had breakfast and just a great way to start the day praying for people amen nothing better to do right yeah nothing had a couple of gentlemen that really needed prayer both of them are miracles yeah still living one of them we'd actually missed him and i hadn't been there he hadn't been there in a few weeks and come to find out he'd been in the hospital had to have a couple of stents put in and, oh wow and something else also and um so praise God, he's still with us, but I, none of us really knew that he was in there. So so we prayed for his quick and total and complete recovery. Amen? Amen. 100%. Amen. Not 95. Complete, quick, total recovery. Not 96. Yep, total recovery. Not 97. Total means 100. 100%. 100%. Amen. 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 I apologize. I was getting my... Uh, Get my my Bible app up and open. I got my app my app right here. You got your app, yeah. But Amen. I got the Bible app on my phone too, just in case. Yeah, Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I tell you, we uh, I got back Saturday night at one o'clock in the morning, chap. I, th- I think I told you this, and I'm I'm tired. You know, I'd been traveling and working uh, all day, and yeah, a lot of stuff going on. And uh, drove back from my, we flew into Orlando and drew back, you know, drove back from Orlando and I sat there and on the side of the bed and I wore out. Yeah. And I says, Lord, I need you. Oh yeah. For, for Sunday morning. <laughs> for yeah. Sunday morning, you know, cause we got chapel service, you know, I yeah. said, Lord, if you want me going? I'm not, you know, wake me up. Wake me up. 530, yeah. 530 AM. My eyes go bing, and it was just like I drank a cup of coffee. Yeah, praise God. Yeah, he had me up, and uh, we went in there and uh, had a wonderful service, yeah. you know, with the, with our brothers in the, in the prison, and uh, it was powerful, you know. And uh, Amen. I tell you, you know, there's some the praise team in there, you know, I don't have to tell you, you deal with them way more than I ever did or ever have, and uh, they, they, you know, they they go to these. You know, they just went to that um, competition. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, How did that, that go? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So they just went, they, you know, they won their region and then they went yeah. to the state and they went to the state last week. Really? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they're doing really good. And they refused to sing secular music. Good for them. 
They they have put their foot down and they said they refuse. Good for them. They refuse. Good for so, them. So, um, you know, and that's Brother Westbrook Who, actually the yeah. one that's running. It. Good for him. Yeah. Who's in the group, or can you tell me real briefly? Uh, or is the, our man that's up and down and like a roller coaster in no, it? No, no, he's still what? he's on the downside of the roller coaster. Okay. right Okay, well he he he's the one that ruined it for us last year. Yeah. So they, we had a great group, and yeah. unfortunately, he was on the down. Uh, they have a really good group now, yeah. uh, and um, some of them brothers in there. Just it's just amazing to That's see awesome. the Lord working on them. You I'm know? so happy to hear that. Um, and I want to share some testimonies about them. But you know, I, I sit back and I look, and, and I walked in there and I talked to the one orderly, and uh, I, I had to pray for them brothers because, um, you know, they came back and this lady that does the. Um, or put, you know, does like puts everybody everywhere, you know, and all that mm-hmm. stuff, you know. Well, they came back, I guess, on maybe Thursday. Okay. Now, this was Sunday that I'm there. And um, the chaplain and this orderly goes over because he's in charge of F- FCB. He wants, you know, they let know who's in faith and character base and who's mm-hmm. not so they can put the beds accordingly and all that. And, um, anyways, they go up there with this assistant chaplain. Now, they just get back. They did, She had no beds for them, so they put them in confinement. Oh, my goodness. Mm. So you know what the chaplain says? Well, they're nothing but a headache to me anyway, so leave them in confinement for the whole weekend. Oh, my gosh. Now, goes back to they were working, spreading the gospel. Call it like it is through, 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 through gospel music, you know? Call it like it is the good news music, that gospel music, you yeah. know? Gospel means good news. Yeah. And then they automatically come back and they, they get put in confinement. Oh, my God. And, it, and it's just awful. That's awful. the devil. That's the devil working, the devil. you know? Uh, it, it reminds me of a show I've been watching, just a real light kind of show. Uh, but um, they're, they're lawyers. And uh, this one lawyer was, like, very uncaring and not compassionate at all uh, for this young drug addict. Uh, I mean, I'm talking young, 21 or two or something. And the other woman, the other lawyer, she said, what if that was one of, if that was your daughter? Mm-hmm. What right. if that was your daughter? Right. That's somebody's daughter. Right. That's somebody's uh, mother's daughter or father's daughter, you yeah. know? They can't, they can't, they, they just can't see it. No, yeah. they don't, they don't have that. They've lost that compassion. They've been in the system so long, evidently. I don't know, you know, I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Oh, they don't know Jesus. I don't yeah. know. Who now knows? think about that. A man of the cloth. Yeah. Well. You know, I mean, yeah. you got that title, you know. Got the title. But you know, you and I both know that we're held to a higher standard. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh because we're we're called and we answer the call and, and mm-hmm. we do what we do for ministry, you know. Uh but you know, it's just the reason I brought it up is because, you know, we fall under those those attacks, mm-hmm. you know, you and I both know, but we have to because Hosea four six we say it all the time. My children are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you do not know how to fight the battle, you're going to lose. Yeah, you know, you're going to lose. You know, if you go into any kind of war, any kind of battle, if you're not trained or, or, or prepared, yeah, you've got to have your weapons. Yeah, and the weapons are for war, of war for not carnal, but not carnal. mighty, mighty of pulling down strongholds through Amen. God of pulling down strongholds. Yeah. You know, and we have to understand that we need the scripture. We need the, the in Ephesians 6, he calls it the sword of the spirit because it's an offensive weapon. Yep, the only it, one. And it's the word of God, yeah. you know. So we need to understand we need his word is an offensive weapon mm-hmm. for us to be able to fight our battles, yeah. you know. But once we come underneath the, you know, you know, we're doing God's work, we're going to get attacked. How many baby Christians do you see come, give their life to the Lord, and all of a sudden just bam? Mm-hmm. It's everything in there. It just comes at them in the kitchen sink. Mm-hmm. And then the next thing you know, they're not going to church no more. Yep. Devil can't stand it. You know, we have a a, a couple that has been coming to our church that we're having to minister to. And sure enough, I mean, just bad. It's just they, they started coming to church. Everything's going good. And all of a sudden, bam. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to put their, their, their stuff out there, but they're under a major attack. Yeah. You know? And it's like, wow, this is what the, all this is going on. And we understand it. But, but if you don't. We can, you can't half step. You can't half step this this walk with the Lord, because He wants you to go all in. He went all in for us at, at Calvary. You know, God sent His only begotten Son. 
You know, that's all in as far as I'm concerned, doing the, whatever he could to, to set us free. Yeah. We can't we can't go do we can't half step this walk. When you half step this walk, you're gonna get annihilated. Yeah. You truly are. Yeah. Well, those young Christians, that's where uh we need to uh stand in for them. For sure. Because they don't know how to fight the good fight of faith. Right. And so that's right. what you know. And the devil's got to go, you know, and especially with these young Christians like that, you just rebuke Satan and you'll see him run. Yeah. But the other flip side of that is, is uh, as far as being attacked, of course, and you very well know, is everybody that's doing something for the Lord is going to get attacked because the for devil sure. can't. He wants to. He wants to stop it. He wants to for slow sure. you for down, sure. yeah. stop you, whatever he can do. And, especially, and the more you do for him, the the more attacks will come. Yes, for and sure. And so that's why it is so so important to know uh, your authority in the name of Jesus and, and know the scriptures and know that you can rebuke Satan, you can resist him, and he's got to go. He might not go right now. He might not go today or, or, or tomorrow morning or, or, you know, tomorrow, but the next day or the day after, he's got to go. You have yeah. to stand your ground. This is in Ephesians 6, he says, do everything you can to stand. And stand. And you stand, stand against the wiles of ground. the devil. Yeah. You got to stand. You yeah. have to do everything. Well, doing everything means doing everything. Yeah. And that, that means educating yourself in the Word. Right. And that, that's really part of uh, my testimony tonight. I'll share whenever it's a good time to do it. But, um, um, yeah, it's standing your ground and fighting the good fight of faith. All right. Amen. 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 Yeah. But you got to know how. Yeah, you got to know how. You got to know how to fight gotta it. Got to have the word yeah. in you. Yeah. It's like if we, you know, a young man or young woman, they go and they join the military and they just walk in the door and they, you know, put a suit on them and then put them out the back door and just hand them a gun and say, Yeah, here, go, fire go the gun. They don't even know how to load it. Don't, yeah, exactly. Don't even know how to load it. <laughs> or give them a gun, exactly. don't give them no bullets. Yeah, that's a good illustration, and and yeah. I'll tell you what, it come, turn around uh, full circle again. Um, we need to be there for these people for sure. They don't know the word. I mean, come on, they just got yeah. saved. That you can't expect them yeah. to know the word. Yeah, takes well, time, and we need to, you know we need to educate them and and, yeah. and we disciple and you, them. Yeah, you come every Thursday to our church, and you you come to it's word study. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Whatever the yeah. Lord puts on your heart, it's a word study. And you and you, you you preach like I do, you know, part testimony and and then part word mm-hmm. and how the word relates to today and yeah. you know mm-hmm. how it relates to how you can implement the word in your life yeah. and, and how you're supposed to stand on the word and everything. But you know, these people they they kind of half step, and I was there, you know. And, and if you half step, I'm here to tell you that the, the adversary will take you out. Mm-hmm. I seen this thing the other day. It said, uh, "Do you want to know how important you are?" Basically, your soul is, and that's you. You don't know how important you are. Is God had sent His only begotten Son, yeah, to die on a cross for you. Yep. And the devil's has done everything he can to destroy you. Yes, he is. That's how important you are. That's right. And I'm talking to everybody that's listening to us on 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 Facebook, you know, uh, on this podcast, and um, it, 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 that's how important you are. Mm-hmm. Everybody is. That's right. The devil's done everything. He can't stand you. He's going to kill you in the chance he, in every chance he can. Mm-hmm. You're either working for him, and he's not going to kill you. You know what I'm saying? He's going to give you the tools to help him. He'll eventually kill you. Eventually he will. Yeah, he'll, he'll yeah. take you down that road, and you think everything's yeah. fine. Then he'll get rid of you because he can just find somebody else to take your place because mm-hmm. that's his goal. But we, they, but we entertain him. You know, they mm-hmm. enter, A lot of people entertain him. You know, so... You know, uh, you know, so he's going to try, uh, try to destroy you. He will, mm-hmm. like you said, he will destroy you when he can. Eventually, he's going to do it. Yeah, yeah, especially for somebody that doesn't know Jesus. Yeah, then th- that's that's a soul lost. Yeah, gained by him, but lost to the Lord. Right, and that's his whole goal. Yeah, Amen. Amen. You know, uh, there was this young lady that uh, came to our church years ago. Um, that was a couple of years ago, and uh, we. She she was demonically possessed, and uh, we spoke to her. And before she she knew, so she says, "I know something's wrong with me." I said, "Well, do you know what's going?" Nope, don't know nothing. Nope, I know something's wrong with me. I feel like there's something inside of me. And sure enough, she was loaded. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> she, was, <laughs> she was loaded with and, and she was loaded for not with not good, and, but bad. And huh? I, and, and <laughs> as we were talking, and because I wanted to see if she says, "Well, I did this or I did that," so she could repent of it and, and, yeah. and rebuke the you know. And we went on. We ended up casting demons out of her, 
And uh, at the end of it, she says, she looks at me, she says, I'm going to tell you, and she told me she had dabbled in witchcraft. And well, far she, beyond. She opened far, that door, didn't she? Far beyond a Ouija board, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, just a Ouija board opened up. I mean, anything, you know, you, you know, not to go down that road, but anyway, she, that's what opened the door. And she didn't tell me at the beginning, mm-hmm. but she told me afterwards. And yeah. you know what she said to me? She says, I'm here to tell you the devil's uh, best how do you how did she put it the best thing that or the the best thing the devil ever did is is try to convince the world that he does not exist mm-hmm. yep people yep. don't know that he is, he there is a devil that's right there is a heaven and there is a a hell and we are yep. eternal beings but mm-hmm. we have to pick our residence yep. of where we're going to live that's right brother hagen always said there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun hell to shun yep. amen he sure did amen and uh, uh praise god yeah I tell you, it's uh, it just breaks my heart, you know. That, I mean, Christians, yeah, uh, carnal Christians that don't know the word at all. They're not. They're happy to go to church and just sit in there and sing a song or two and hear some preaching. Walk out the door and they don't have any idea what the preacher said. Right. And you know, and it just breaks my heart also to know that. They, and I've I've been in them. I've seen them. Because yeah. I was a denominational preacher, main, mainstream denominational preacher mm-hmm. or pastor. And a lot of the guys in my district, oh, my God, they didn't, they didn't have any more business in the pulpit than the man in the moon. Yeah. No no word. They'd get up there and just tell stories. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, oh, gosh. And, and guess what? That's going to be on. It's going to be on their hands because yeah. those people in that congregation did not hear any word. Right. You know, half of them, or even more than that, I don't know. I'm just guessing. Probably weren't even saved. Yeah. Because I, I think I've shared when I first got my um my first church, or maybe it was the second church I pastored, but um I I shared the gospel of Christ for several weeks, the simple gospel of Christ, and uh, had had people. You know, they didn't come to the altar, but they I had them. Uh, uh, stand and and pray the uh, sinner's prayer. Oh my God! Most of the church was not saved. Yeah. And then I've told you a story about the guy I sent on the Emmaus walk. He was my chairman of my our board. He comes back and wants to testify and gets up and says, "I got saved this weekend." You know, and that's our that's the. And he was on the board of a church. He was on the board. He yeah. was my my whatever yeah. you call him, the main guy, and so that. You know that's our denominational church of today. Right. It's it's it, oh my gosh. Mm. Yeah, it's horrible. Break your heart. It it, it does break your heart. <coughs> Excuse me. It does break your heart. You know, um, and when we go through life, you know, we see different people, uh, and, and you know, a lot of people you want to try to help them, but they shun you. You know what I'm saying? They shun you. There's a lot of people that don't that don't I don't deal with anymore. You know, not how do I put that? Not deal with. I, I'm not a hanging around them. Sure. And it's not by my choice, but you know, they despise the light. And the scripture says they despise the light because their bad deeds will be revealed. Right. You know, um and, and a lot of preachers are the same way. They don't mm-hmm. understand the word, you know, and, and uh because some of their bad deeds will be revealed. A couple of years ago, my actually my stepmother and I was talking today, awesome lady, awesome woman of God, and uh, she was saying something about a, I'm not going to mention any names, but a mainstream preacher that is no longer preaching. I'm talking big time, yeah. And there's quite a few big time preachers all over the internet, all over the sure. all over the the TV and everything that are no longer preaching because they have fell, mm-hmm. you know, and because they didn't stand strong, you mm-hmm. know, or maybe they knew the word, maybe they back, I don't know, you know, but. Um, they need to, every every one of us has to stay strong, you know, and uh, we have to stand in order to stay strong. And you and I talked about this earlier. We were talking about the uh, the Ark of the Covenant, um, how we need to stay in the presence of the Lord. If you stand in the presence of the Lord, that you know all that stuff, you'll know. He'll teach you. He can yeah. teach you. Yeah. He can prepare you. He can he can you know say hey don't do that or don't do this or you know what I'm saying. And that's mm-hmm. why you know. Uh, he, we should make him Lord of our life, yeah. not only Savior, but Lord. Yeah. You know, my, one of my favorite scriptures, Romans eight fourteen, for those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Mm-hmm. You know, if those preachers, those preachers have the everybody has the same 
opportunity to walk with Jesus as mm-hmm. we do, yep. you know, and, and to be led by the Spirit of God as we do. Um, you just we have to make that choice and say, Lord, lead me today. Thy will be done today. Mm-hmm. Pick up my cross and follow you. Mm-hmm. And therefore, the Spirit will teach, tell them preachers, oh, don't touch that, don't do that, you know, or whoever, any of us, mm-hmm. you know, don't do that. Don't, don't fall into that trap. There's a snare of the fowler right there. Don't put your foot mm-hmm. in it. You know, there's a big old bear trap right here. You know, yep. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, but I she actually Googled and uh, you you'd be surprised if you was to Google how many preachers are not. Preacher, big bang name, mainstream preachers, and that it's, it's gone. Wow, yeah, I didn't realize That's, that, but it I doesn't mean, surprise bunch, me. A bunch, doesn't I'll talk surprise. to you one off off air because I don't yeah. want to slander their name. Sure, absolutely. We need to pray for them, brothers, and you know, yeah, so they can wow. uh, get back on the right path for sure. Yeah. Wow, but uh, but that's big main you know, mainstream preachers. Well, what about the everyday baby Christian? Oh, yeah, you know. You got to get into the word. You got into get mm-hmm. into a good word teaching, and, and not only get into a good word teaching uh, a ministry, like you know, a, a, some of the Rama places. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, um, Oceans United is a good one. Pastor Jerry, he, I mean, Gerard Curry down in uh, Christ Family. You and I both know he's a good preacher. Yeah, you know, he's, he preaches. He preaches he's got a real word. anointing for preaching yeah. the word. He preaches the word. You know, there's some good preachers. Okeechobee Praise and Worship Center. <laughs> Where is <laughs> that at? That's not in a husky, o- is it? O- 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 <laughs> what did you call it? What did you call it? A husky. <laughs> no, sir. Oh but, my you know, God! And that's an Indian name too, back in Carolina. Is it? Is it? Oh yeah, yeah a husky. Yeah. 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 But, you know, and, and, and that's critical. You know, I, I actually wrote about it in the paper not too long ago. It said, you know, and I said, because there was an anointing that fell upon me. It's like, you know, the church, we need to get into a good church. And not only do we need to get into a good church for ourselves, because we know we're, in, we're the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. So if we're the body of Christ, we all need to come together. Because mm-hmm. guess what? If I chop my big toe off today, for some reason, something comes in and chops my Ow. big toe off. <laughs> I'm not going to walk right coming out of here. No, you're not. Okay, you got me. So I need that big toe. You need it. So some but there's a big toe out there for some ministry that is missing. Mm-hmm. So if you come to if you go to the Lord and ask Him to put you in the right church family, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Then you can not only come along for support for yourself, yeah, but you can be a support for you, somebody. Yeah, you can fill a spot. Exactly, a missing yeah. spot. You know, we're blessed that the Lord blessed us with the congregation, you know, the, the, the little church that's amazing, love our church, that the Lord has blessed us with. And, um, you know, we have, a, we have like a little family, you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, that, and people don't come all the all, all, every week, but there is a nucleus of the family. Yep. You're a part of you and Teresa are part of it. Yeah, and, and that's what it is, too. It's your it's extended family. family. Exactly. That's uh, the way a church ought to be. We're we're so blessed, uh, and just to announce it, we are at two hundred one Southwest Tenth Avenue in Okeechobee, Florida, uh, just on the backside of uh, the the auction. There, uh, we uh, we're blessed. We're, we love our family so much. We're going to have our Thanksgiving dinner. At hey, our man, church. I wish I could be there. I'll yeah. be honest oh, with we'd you. Oh, we'd be we we'd have we we'd, yeah. we'd enjoy it. We're going to be having our family at our house, so that won't Which that is, won't that won't work. But yeah, anyway, it's a great thing. <laughs> but I mean, you know. We love people, you know, yeah. and and we want. There's a lot of people out there that don't have, but you know, one or two people, and they're like, "Well, I'm gonna make this big dinner. Yeah. Let's all come together, yeah, and we have a good time. The kids yeah. go outside and play, you know. We, we yeah. sit around a fellowship, and yeah. I speak just a little short word the Lord puts on yeah. our hearts, and we've always done this this big. Um, we get in a big circle, and we join hands, mm-hmm. and uh, usually I'll start it and end it. With I start off with uh, what I'm thankful for because it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thank the Lord for what He's done. Certain yeah. things. I think we're going to do that Thursday. In we my go, house. we go around, and then it ends with mm-hmm. me, and I end it with a prayer. Yeah, we usually you know? do that too. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, but, and, and like I was saying earlier, I'm sorry, I interrupted ahead. you. No, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, like uh, we talked about it earlier on the phone, but uh, think about this, folks. Um, if you're looking for a ministry. There are a lot of people out there that are widows, widowers, um, or maybe they're just alone. Yeah, you know, you know, they they need somebody to let them know that they're loved. Yeah, amen. So you can invite them to one of these, like Okeechobee Worship Center, and take them. Yeah, we'll be eating at two o'clock. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about the fifty-five plus communities. Yeah. You know, those there are a lot of people in there that have lost their spouses. Yeah, you know, you could go in if you want a ministry. Go into their uh, clubhouse. Uh, clubhouse. Thank mm-hmm. you. I couldn't think of that earlier. And and uh, you know, 
have a Thurs, uh, um, a Thanksgiving meal, have a Christmas yeah. meal, have a New Year's meal, have a meal once a week. Preach and, the word. And if tell them you love them. And you might say, well, I would love to do it, but I can't afford it. Well, I'm here to tell you. My phone number is 561 273 3114. It's 561 273 3114. If you can't afford it and you want to do it, you call me and I'll Amen. make sure you have enough food to do it. With. Amen. And I will help. Yes. Absolutely. Because the Lord will provide. I promise I, you that. Amen. And I tell you, you start and God will provide because I started um, um, a. Uh, feeding ministry back home, a mobile home pantry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that right? No. Um, oh gosh, what was it called? Um, a mobile pantry, I guess, is what it was called. It's a truck carrying food to to a, a, a vacant um, strip mall. Right. <clears throat> and we didn't have the money. We didn't have the support at first. So we, Teresa and I, footed the bill. Oh wow! At first, for for like I don't know, a couple of months. And then I went out, and uh, I got some other churches involved. And next thing you know, we had more than enough money. Amen. God provides. If God provide. calls you to do well, – Kenneth Hagin got called to go to uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, and start a, 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 a school teaching faith. And he told God, he said, okay, I'm going to do that. He said, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing traveling right now, and uh, I've got a really good ministry going but, Lord, if that's what you want me to do, I will go. But I'm not going to ask for any money. You're going to provide. And if the money dries up, I'm going back on the road. When I was out there, I never heard the man ask for one dime. But he'd been out there already, but what, probably 20 years already when I was there, and the place is still going strong. Yeah, amen. So, you know, God will provide. Yeah, amen. 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 He will definitely provide. He amen. He will definitely provide. It's It's amazing. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was, uh, who was I talking to? I was talking to Pastor Terrell the other day. And, um, you know, when uh, we started that little old church out there, I was with uh, uh, Pastor Jerry and Pastor Donald at that time. They started me out there in that church. And I didn't know nothing. All I did was show up and say, Lord, help me. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know. You know, I thought they were going to you know, come up with pitchforks and run me out of town. Who knows? You know, I didn't know nothing. But uh, we just had our six-year anniversary. And in six Praise years' time. Praise God. Six years already. Six-year anniversary. We just had our six-year anniversary. And not only that, we have our own building that the Lord blessed us with. Man, yeah. And that's a, that's a testimony oh, in itself. It's a monster. Oh my you know? gosh. And uh, back up, when they sold the first place, we went into the one place. Uh, you were mm-hmm. telling me we were talking about those people not too long ago. We went into the first place, uh, the old Resurrection Life out there on 3rd, and then they sold that. Well, I went and I prayed, and uh, <laughs> the Lord directed us over to Doc Douglas's place right there on, on 70. And, uh, is that the cowboy church? That's the cowboy yep. church. And uh, yep. he, you know, he wanted me to pay $150 a week. I said, okay. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm going to be honest with you, Pastor. We wouldn't get nothing in offering plate back then. Yeah. We wouldn't. We wouldn't get, we wouldn't get a few dollars, you know. <laughs> if, you know, my, my enough to buy his Coca-Cola and maybe a donut or something. You know? And I'm like, Lord. Pack of nabs. Lord, RC I Cola need you. Pack of nabs. So I'm thinking to myself, well, well, I at least could afford, a, you know, I mean, I'll swing it, you know, 150 bucks a week. I could probably, I could probably hold on for a little bit. And I might be able to swing it myself you know, if I had to, you know. And uh, so anyways, um, that brother came in there. He was at our first service. He heard me preach <clears throat> the best I could at that time, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he came back. I came to him the next week to try to give him a check. He goes, no, no. This Okeechobee needs to hear your preacher. Amen. He says, what I told you I was going to want it for a week, uh, that'll be fine for a month. Praise God. Well, not too long after that, you know, I mean, just it was wonderful. We were there for over three years. That, that, that's that's a testimony of God yeah. providing. Yeah, that was huge. You know, you've got to start moving. you got to activate your yeah. faith and yeah. move, do something, whatever he's calling you to do, and then watch God. You, you, I'm going to tell you, i, I got to share this because this is powerful to me. So I, I'll be honest with you, I was I was broken up when I when I couldn't find a place. Mm-hmm. I'm looking everywhere, and I just pulled over on the side of the road, and I prayed. And I'm like, Lord, I need some help. You know, Pastor, I kid you not. I don't know if I've ever told you this. He says, a man out, there's going to be a man out front with a cowboy hat. He actually told me, oh, straw man. cowboy hat. Wow. Listen to this. And he gave me a number seven. 
<laughs> listen, 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 listen. It's, it's exciting. Listen, listen, listen. So I'm like, Lord. And I'm thinking, am I hearing right? You know, I went down every 7th Street, 7th Avenue, 7th, whatever. I went down there mm-hmm. and I couldn't see nothing. And I'm now I'm really bawling. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm bawling, I'm bawling, I'm bawling. Then all of a sudden, uh, Sean, Pastor Sean, which is actually the, the pastor out there on Sunday, Sunday mornings at our mm-hmm. church now, Pastor Sean, and uh, Lindsay, remember little old Lindsay? You remember little sister Lindsay that used to come to the church years ago? She'd help us with the, she had a little boy. Yeah, little short uh, lady. yeah, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. She told me about that place. Like, All right, so home. I called up, and then I told you what happened. You know, he, mm-hmm. we got that place. And then, uh, so time went on, and me being carnal and like a kid, you know, I'm like, one day I walked out there, and, and I'm standing out front, and I'm praying. I was, I was just standing out front of the church, and we got that, that shingle, you know, that we have is out in front of the church still too, mm-hmm. uh, that the uh, they bless us with, and uh, I'm like, Lord, you remember you told me seven cowboy hat, straw cowboy hat at that. He told me straw cowboy hat, and I'm going, and he goes, look around. I spin around because we were there with three different churches. There was mm-hmm. uh, three different churches. We were on Saturday nights there, and there was a church of God on Sunday. But guess what was there on Saturday? A Seventh Day Adventist Church. Oh wow! There's your number seven. Yep. Then I turn around, and look, and what was the mural on the front of the church, Pastor? A man hat. with a cowboy hat. Yep, cowboy hat. Yeah, big that big silhouette. It was the yep. Christ. Uh, what do you call it? Cowboys for Christ. Yep. Symbol. Yep. But I'm going. That's a black. How can you tell us a straw hat? Because I'm telling you, he told me straw hat. Yeah. So late, later on, uh, Doc Douglas went on to be with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And I, I go into the church to for his celebration of life, and the pastor of the seventh day, because that's the church he belonged to, mm-hmm. uh, did the did the did the whole you know the whole service, and it was a wonderful service. But they had these big TVs up there, and they're flipping through pictures, and almost every picture that you seen Doc Douglas in had a straw cowboy hat on. I'll be darned. I'm like, look at God. <laughs> it came in full circle, but it was just amazing, you yeah. know. And people say, "Oh, that was coincidence." That wasn't no coincidence. No, nah, ain't no coincidence. That nah, was no coincidence. I'm here to tell you, it just floored me. I was crying yeah. when I seen that straw cowboy. Yeah, out. it was like, wow. Yeah. But I was just so carnal, I couldn't see it all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's still, he still did it. It was yeah. seventh cow man standing out front with a cowboy, a straw mm-hmm. cowboy. Out. I tell you, if you're if you're a young Christian, you just forget about coincidences with God; they don't exist. Or luck, yeah, or luck. Yeah, you just forget yeah. about that, and you yeah. just give pra- praise to God. I don't care how simple, yeah. you know, whatever the blessing is, yeah. or or whatever, however, what, yeah. whatever, whenever, I, I, all the evers you can think of, you just give God the glory for whatever it is. Amen. 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 I'm telling you. Because that's God. That relationship is available to each and every one of us. Amen. You need you need help. God will tell you. Yep. You know, and I'm telling Amen. you, I was a there was a very powerful part, part of my life, and there's some other things that He's yep. said that we'll, you know we'll talk about. And those are the things that you look back on when you're going through something in the here and now. You can look back on those things and say, well, you know what, God brought me through that. And he'll bring me through this too. Yeah. Amen. You know, Amen. it encourages you, lifts you up your spirits, and. And, and strengthens your faith. You well, know? well, talking about that. So the first time they told me they they basically told me that they sold the building. I either had to find a place to rent that was going to be reasonable, or I had to shut the church down. Yeah, that's when I kind of came out from under, under, underneath uh, that umbrella and went out on my own. I was ordained wonderfully uh, ordained by Doctor Rick Kendall. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, anyways, and then the Lord kind of steered us in a different direction. But that first time, I'm here to tell you, I was broke. I mean, I had, I mean, you talk about walking, I'll be honest with you, I I was scared, I was Mm -hmm. broken, I was upset, I was crying, I didn't know what I was going to do. I never saw any of that. Oh, I was, I'm telling you, it's (laughs) the truth, it's truth, Pastor. Yeah. I'm telling you, I was sick, I I didn't know what I was going to do, but now, fast forward, uh, Doc Douglas went on to be with the Lord, and his, the the, the property went to his family, Mm -hmm. and that next week, uh, his his daughter called me up and she says, "Just to let you know, Pastor, this place is for sale." Mm-hmm. I said, "Okay, y'all just give me a heads up." And I says, "You know, do what you got to do. I understand." Yeah, you know. So I had uh, been paying the rent. I think I paid like three months' rent after that. And um, there was one time that I had paid some money 
to fix the air conditioners mm -hmm. at that place because that place didn't have no air conditioner. I'm here to tell you, they had no windows. It ain't like our church we got now. Yeah, you ain't opening no windows. Yeah. You know. Uh, so, anyways, uh, I fixed the air conditioner, and um, she calls me up, and it was actually when we was at the hospital with Mama Linda, mm -hmm. and uh, she calls me up, and I I gave her a check or no, how did it go? Oh, I gave her a check, a rent check. And uh, she calls me. She says, Pastor, she says, I got good news and bad news. She says, which one do you want first? <laughs> I said, Sister, give it to me however you want to. I said, I, we were over with it, you know. She says, well, uh, the good news, what is this? She says, the good news is we're, we're tearing up your check because you shouldn't have been the only one paying for that repair. But the bad news is we sold the building. Okay. When that happened, I'm here to tell you, I got a, a, a joyful sensation inside wow. of me. Praise God. Like my spirit jumping. I go, praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. You know, that you sold the building. So, because I, I didn't know what we were going to do, but I know our God. Yeah. I'd already been through it. Yeah. Just what you just said. Yeah. I'd already been through it. Yeah. And he, he led me through it. He led me to that wonderful church. Mm -hmm. And we, we had some good church in that church. Yeah, Pastor, we did. You remember that? We had some yeah, real good absolutely. church in that place. Yeah. You know, it was half run down. Like your, your wife told me one time, she says, the popcorn's already popped on the ceiling. <laughs> 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 that, that's that. Teresa. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, we had some, we had some showing up church, <laughs> God, ch nice. church in that place, you know. And the uh, Lord sure blessed us for that season, you know. <laughs> and uh, but, I, but, my, <clears throat> but my spirit just leapt, you know. And I'm like, Lord, I need you, you know. So we went on for a couple weeks, you know, and they'd give us, oh, I think, I don't know, I think it was like a month to a couple months whatever, and they, they was going to close on the building. Mm -hmm. So I tried to get a hold of the new owner. He he shunned me. He wanted nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm like, fine. I said, Lord, you know, wh what are we going to do? And I don't know if whether it was hardened his heart or whatever, because I might have walked in there, because, you know, I'm a salesman. You know, I don't walked mm -hmm. in there and got me uh, some rent or you know, whatever, you know, whatever, I, whatever happened. I don't know what happened with him, but I never even spoke to the man. Uh, but I'm like, okay, God. And God's like, and, but I'm telling you, Pastor, a week and a half, before she told me that they sold the building, I was preaching, and I said to the congregation, the Lord put on my heart, I said, the Lord's putting on my heart right now, we need to pray for our own place. Mm -hmm. I had been praying because uh, Kingdom Rain Ministries had lost their church, mm -hmm. and it broke my heart because I love them brothers and sisters down mm -hmm. there. Dr. Rick's church, he goes down there and goes to church with the uh, 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 Apostle Chris, Turney, right. and Jill and all them. Mm -hmm. I had been praying because it broke my heart that they lost their church. The mm -hmm. way they done, I'm not getting into that, but they lost their church. So I was praying for them, praying for them. I had sowed seed and everything, you know, for them to get their church. And, uh, you know, you know how we sow seed and pray over the seed. Sure, and all that, yeah. You know, and I sowed seed in the, for their church. So anyways, they ended up getting their church. And they have a Praise wonderful, God. wonderful church down there. So uh, when I, and I, I was, I'm renting, I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? The Lord's mm -hmm. going to make a way. I mean, you know me. I'll get me a tree on a ditch bank somewhere. We're going to have church, you know what I'm saying? And we can catch us, a tent. <laughs> catch us a fish or something, or whatever, you know. But uh, anyways, uh, the Lord put in my heart because I knew about this man in church around the corner. And the um, uh, Lord says, you remember that church? And he's going and looking at that church. Mm -hmm. I walked over there and the grass was like four foot tall in that church. Yeah. You know? It was a mess at first. It sure was. And uh, I'm like, Lord, is this it? And... It was just silence. I didn't hear anything. And Brother Danny goes, Pastor, this is our, because Brother Danny was with me, this is our church, this is our yeah. home. And, you know, Amen. I'm like, and I was still like this, you know what, because I'm battling with my flesh and everything. And showing up, uh, you know, I got a hold of this one, got a hold of that yeah. one, another pastor, and this sure. the next thing you know, somebody brought me, uh, they says, come pick up the keys. Yeah, and, and there were some bumps. Yeah, there, there were, were some bumps, bumps but there God was, worked it out. He worked it out. And then he, then the next thing you know, and, uh, you know, we we got our own church, and the mm -hmm. church it's actually our church. You yeah. know, and it's got two buildings on it, and, and it's a it's a a nice couple oh, of buildings. Oh, not just, beautiful. Not, I started to say nice buildings. It's both buildings yeah. are nice. Yeah, we got a fellowship hall. And we yeah. have the main congregation hall. Yeah, and uh, you know, we were having some issues uh, with some things, but we're handy. We got some stuff fixed, and next thing you know, my my um uh before we left, um. The the offering plate. Remember, I told you when we went in, I'm like 150 dollars a week. We're not getting no offering place. Next thing you know, the offering plate started coming. Praise big, God, big, big, big. And I'm like, we had a you know the bank account was pretty, pretty, pretty healthy. And I'm like, Jamie, Praise God's God. doing something. Yeah, 
I said, God's doing something. Amen. So we went in, and that 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 place had owed back uh, uh, bills, uh, water bills, electric bills. Uh, they had owed the county fines mm-hmm. and all this. Yep. It was thousands and thousands yep. and thousands of dollars. There was like I don't know how many thousands of dollars, Pastor, that they owed back. It was a, a fine. They were going to fine them for so much per day for not keeping the place up and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, they actually, um, I went in, I'm like, Lord, I need you, you know. And I had some money, but it's God's money, you know. So I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to do? He says, go to the people. And I went to the people. Next thing you know, I'm in front of the magistrate Mm -hmm. at this big hearing. And I walked in there, and I was just beating me and prayed before we went in there. Mm -hmm. And they dropped that bill down to... I'm telling you, it was it was thousands, mm-hmm. and they said, "Mr. Kelly, what do you think about seven hundred fifty dollars?" I said, "Who do I pay?" Seven hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> I said, "Who I, do I, I pay?" I had forotten that. I said, "Who who? who wow! Who, y'all, y'all take cash or check? Look at the credit card. Let's yeah, get this man. thing. Let's get this Hurry thing paid up, right sign the now. Paper, let me get out the door before they change their mind. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and uh, he just he blessed us, you know. Yeah. And uh, but you know that's that's walking my faith, Pastor. Amen. Hey man, you got, got if you'll just let God, that God be God, He will blow your brains out. I mean, I, it, and I say that in a f- laughing way. He's not going to kill you, but He will blow your mind. Let me put it that. That's the way to put it. If you just let Him, yeah, He will blow your mind. You know, it, 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 and the scripture that I have is just the, one of our go tos. Uh, you know, uh, is Proverbs three. Uh, let's see five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's Trust a go-to for me. All your heart. Amen. And lean on it to all understanding. All your ways acknowledge yeah. him, and he shall direct he will. your path. Amen. Amen. He wants us to live in an uh, atmosphere of peace. Yeah. That that peace that surpasses all understanding. Because if you're uh, anxious, if you're, got, uh, if you're fearful, if you're always worrying about this, that, and the other, you're, you're no good to him. Amen. Amen. You 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 cannot minister no. if you're always stressed out about something. You know I don't know where it is, but I guarantee you, if you if you uh, uh, there's a scripture that says anxiety is an anchor. Mm-hmm. Now think about that. Anxiety is anchor. I'm gonna tell you right now, anxiety is fear's cousin. Yeah, it, absolutely. Fear's cousin, and it's an anchor to keep you from your destination. Yeah. To think about it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Because you think about uh, the fear is going to come. Yeah, and after the fear comes, you start worrying and thinking about yeah. it and all, and and eventually you're stressing out and you have anxiety. So it's all of the devil, every and then, bit of and it. And he also tells you, don't have anxiety, don't fear, yeah. don't worry. Yeah. What, what can what mm-hmm. what can you add to your life by worrying? Yeah. Well, Jesus, you know, he 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 talked about it. Yeah. You know, in uh, what is it, Matthew six, and then he he ended up with in six thirty three saying, "Seek ye first. The kingdom, the kingdom of, God. of God and all of his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Yeah. But then Paul talked about it, too, in Philippians 4, mm-hmm. 6, you know, be anxious for nothing. So don't worry about anything. Don't fret, you know, all these, mm-hmm. you know, and they're commands. Yeah, amen. amen. It's not Paul's, you know, the Holy Ghost is not through Paul and him writing is not asking. He's saying, no, do this. Yeah. Yeah. Do this if you want the peace that surpasses all understanding. Well, in Joshua one nine, he come and in Isaiah also. I forgot mm-hmm. where in Isaiah, but he, he, he commands us not to be afraid. Yep, I command you to mm-hmm. not be afraid. Yep, because the Lord our God will be with you no matter where no you matter go. What. Though yeah. I walk through the and shadow of the valley of death, flat out he I says, fear "I no command evil. you to yep. not be afraid." Yeah. Yep, the, the Bible's full of it. Yeah, amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Before we uh, wrap up, I want you to share your testimony. <coughs> Is it, uh, are we about out of time? We've okay. got uh, 15 minutes, wow. 16 minutes. Okay, that's plenty of time for me. Yeah, so here's the deal. Um, um, I was driving down the road. Teresa and I have been battling uh, symptoms of a cold. Yes, sir. You know, and we're both like, I would say, 96, 7% healed now. Amen. Okay. So anyway, I'm riding down the road a few days ago, uh, and a lot of times the Lord gives me a download of all places while I'm driving. So sometimes I pull over. Other times I just write without looking, and it's nothing but scribble, and I have no idea what I wrote (laughs) because I got a little pad right there next to me. But anyway, uh, he said this. He said that um, uh, Jesus gave 100% at Calvary. 
you need to expect 100% in whatever you're believing for. He said, you are 90-some percent healed. Now, this is a few days ago, so I was probably in the 80 percentile then. Feeling pretty good, though, maybe 90 percent. How's that? He said, you don't believe for 90 percent healing. You believe for 100 percent because Jesus didn't, uh, he didn't give 90 percent. He gave 100 percent at Calvary. He was all in for you. Mm-hmm. And no matter what you're believing for, whether it's healing or pros- uh, prosperity, your needs met according to his riches and glory, an emotional issue, families get your family getting saved, whatever it is, you go in 100% and don't settle for anything less. Amen. And I thought, wow, that is good. So I thought, no. And now I'm at like that 96, 7, 8% healed. No, I'm going for the extra 3%. I'm not stopping here. Because if I stop here, then the devil might, you might give him a, a place to slide yeah, on in creep it back down. And, and let that, that, uh, um, what do you call it? That, um, uh, fake or whatever, uh, uh, sickness come back on me. Cause you know, it's, it's a, like I say, it's a symptom. I'm not, I'm not accepting the sickness right, as, amen. as being sick, but it is a symptom. Amen. You call those things that are not as though they are not, you don't call those things that are. You know, you got symptoms. You got them. You don't right, say you don't right. have them. That's right. lying. Yeah. So you don't call those things that are as though they're not. You call those things that are not as though they are. So I'm not totally. I'm 97%. But I'm saying in Jesus' name, because he bore the stripes at Calvary, that I'm 100%, and I'm going to see that manifest in my body. Amen. So the, the second part of this is that uh, Teresa was dreaming uh, last night, just last night now, and uh, she was standing in uh, maybe uh, waist deep water, and one of those great big uh, snakes came by. Those anacondas or whatever they're called, I don't mm-hmm. even know. Python anaconda. Pi- yeah, type. whatever it was, swimming by. And he, she said that she saw the head, and the eyes kind of would look at her just a little bit and then look the other way, and it went right by her. She said, but the tail of that snake was dying. It was, it was just all falling apart. And that tail brushed her just a little bit. And then she said the next part of her dream, they were up on the shore, in the, you know, on the sandy bank, embankment there. And, that, and she, that snake was going right by her, and the snake would not look at her. And the snake stopped. And she looked at the snake, and the snake would not meet her eyes. And she said, I knew that the snake was, was afraid of me, was terrified of me. And it wouldn't look me in the eye. And she said, I knew that that snake, it was telling me that I have authority over Satan. And Satan is nothing but a dying snake that can't even, you know, get across the, the sand. And uh, she got up that this morning praising God and saying, I'm healed in Jesus' name. I'm totally healed. Amen. She's, she's still got the 3% to go too. <laughs> she could be there. Praise God. Amen. 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 And so, uh, what a wonderful thing! God speaking yeah. to our hearts, you know, and through, saying, through through a dream. That's a wonderful thing. Through a dream, yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. And I'm I'm like you. Sometimes he'll give me some downloads when I'm driving down the road too. Yep. So I'll be. What I do is I I grab and Jamie Jamie will get these weird texts because I grab Jamie and I'll go to text center because I can speak text and I'll mm-hmm. speak into them. Oh yeah, yeah. And I'll text Jamie and she she knows not to even pay attention because <laughs> that's how I do a note for later on. I'll go, what did I do? And then I pull it up and okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, so funny. Praise God. God's good. Yes, he is. He's amazing. God is good. He is amazing. He, he says, wants to give us everything in this book, Amen. every promise in there. Amen. So we have 11 minutes left, and I wanted to share a real quick teaching that the Lord gave me mm-hmm. uh, over the weekend. Uh, it was powerful to me because the one of the, the roots of, the biggest root of all sin is pride. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me cruise over here real quick to First Peter uh, five. Okay, I'll meet you there. Let me see where was we at. Five six it says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. Okay. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. But backing up, verse 5, it says, Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. 
Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Amen. We all want to receive God's grace. Mm-hmm. How do we receive it? We have to be humble. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be resisted, so we can't be proud, prideful, right? And therefore, humble yourselves. We need to humble ourselves. We got to know He is God, Creator of all things good. He created the world. He sent His only begotten Son to save us, right? So we need to submit ourselves to God mm-hmm. and, and 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 not to be proud, right? So then He shot me over to. Um, Proverbs 3, uh, there we go, it says, uh, verse 1, it says, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. So I preached this Sunday in uh, the chapel, and I had this young man come up with a tablet, and he took notes for me. The Lord, This is all by the Lord's direction. And uh, <clears throat> because I can't do nothing, <laughs> I can't preach nothing mm-hmm. or get any of these, you know, these things that he gives me without, he gives them to me. I, I don't take the credit for none of it. Uh, so, he, he, you know, this young man comes up, he grabs the tablet. I says, listen to me, do me a favor, write down every benefit, every benefit that I'm fixing to tell you. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we went, we started in first Peter five, right? Mm-hmm. First Peter 5 says he gives grace to the humble. So automatically we receive his grace, right? This is, my son, do not forget my law, but, but let your heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace be added to you. Hold on. We all want peace, right? We all mm-hmm. want long, yep. right? We all want long life, right? Length mm-hmm. of days and long life. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so if I found, find favor and high esteem. Who wants favor and high esteem from God? If I find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on to the own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. We spoke about that a second ago. Mm-hmm. Well, we can't. If we're prideful, he can't direct us because mm-hmm. we know more than he does. Uh, do not be wise unto your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil, and it would be health to your flesh. Mm-hmm. We all want health Amen. to our flesh. Amen. Health to our flesh and strength to our bones. Strength we all to want our that. Bones, yeah. Honor the Lord with your first possession, your first fruits with all your increase. Mm-hmm. Now, some, now the Lord put it on my heart too because I'm preaching this. Now I'm telling these guys to honor the Lord with your first possessions and the first fruit of your of your increase. Right. So then the Lord directs me. Well, these guys don't have no money. They're in prison. I said, God. You you think you don't have anything to sow. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot to sow. Mm-hmm. So then I tell them, well, number one, the first thing you need to sow is your time. Mm-hmm. I says, time is the most precious commodity. Once you sow your time, you're never going to get it back. Mm-hmm. You spend it. It's, you know, you know. So, and I had this one brother tell me, he says, I don't spend my time. I invest my time. Amen. I'm I remember like, that. Yeah, I remember that. So anyways, That's then the good. Lord brings up the fruits of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. And I rattled off all the fruits of the Spirit. I says, it says the first fruits, right? Mm -hmm. The first fruits. Pops up the fruits of the Spirit. I says, and I start talking to him about, I said, what do the fruits have? All fruits have seed. That's why he calls it fruit. So if it's seed, you need to plant that seed. Mm -hmm. So it'll germinate and produce more. Well, if you're running around sowing love, guess what you're going to get back? Yep, going to get love. Peace. Yep, you're going to peace. sow peace. What are you going to get back? Peace. With joy Amen. and so on and so on. Long suffering yeah. and so on and so forth. Gentle, kindness, self control. You're going to, that's what you're going to get back. That says, uh, Tristan, increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty. So anybody of you out there say that we're after your money, we're not after your money. A lot of churches, there might be some churches that are after your money. We're trying to teach you to understand that that's a law. Mm-hmm. But God will not be mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, he shall reap. Yeah. So good seed. Get good harvest. Mm-hmm. So bad seed, get bad harvest. It's up yep. to you what you sow. Yep. So your barns will be filled with plenty. Your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastising of the Lord, nor detest his correction. If you're prideful, you can't receive his correction. So I went on. I don't read the whole thing. When the Lord corrects, loves, he corrects. <clears throat> this is a father, the son, in whom he delights. Happiness is the man who finds wisdom. That's another benefit. Well, who wants to find wisdom? Mm-hmm. 
Well, you have to sacrifice your pride. You have to humble yourselves. It says, and a man who gains understanding. For her priests are better than prophets of silver and are gainer than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And, she, and, uh, and all the things that you may desire cannot compare to her. Length of days in her right hand and her left hand, riches and honor. Pride will keep... I'm, 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 I'm going to mess it up. So her ways are, excuse me, her ways are ways of pleasantness. We all want pleasantness. Her paths are peace. We all want peace. She is a tree of life. And those who take hold of her and are happy in all who retain her. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up. The clouds dropped the dew. My son, let not, excuse me, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and direction mm-hmm. so that they will fill the life of your soul. And he's just writing his tail off, you know, writing this stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, this is, then you will walk safely in your own way and your foot will not stumble. Mm-hmm. Who wants a stumbling foot? When you lie down, you will not be afraid. This is, uh, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Sweet. Who wants sweet mm-hmm. sleep? Every, yep. All of us do. Do not be afraid of the sudden terror and the trouble from the wickedness when it comes. None of us wanted to. For the Lord will, will be, excuse me, will be your confidence. And will keep your foot from being caught. And do not withhold good from those who it is due, when it is the power of your hand to do so. Do not say to your neighbor, go back and come home, and then tomorrow I will give it to you, when you have it with you. Mm-hmm. Do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells in your safety, dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strive against a man without cause, for he has done you no harm. Do not envy your oppressor, and choose not none of his ways. For the perverse Persian person is an abomination to, to, to the Lord. But his secret counsel is with the upright. The curse of the Lord is on the household of the wicked. But be blessed in the home of the just. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. Mm-hmm. Right? We all want his grace. It says, the wise shall inherit the glory, but the shame shall be the legacy. Wow. Of My gosh. That's powerful, isn't it? My gosh. So when he, when I, I turn around, I, I, you know, read all this and I'm mm-hmm. like, write this down, write this down. And then, uh, cause if you think about it, it goes all the way back to verse five. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on the yeah. and all your ways of knowledge. And he should direct mm-hmm. your paths. Right. Mm-hmm. And he says, my son, do not forget my laws, but keep your heart and keep my commandments. Mm-hmm. And I, I says, and he, he read off all those benefits that, that, that we talked about from first yeah. Peter five, Proverbs three. And I says, and we love, love, because you get a bunch of amens and hallelujah, just like you and I just did. Mm-hmm. And I says, all those are great, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I says, now think one thing right now. What's the th- only thing that can stop you from getting this? He just told us is our pride. Yep. Our pride would be the roadblock from us receiving there all you those go. benefits. Yeah. That was powerful. Yeah, me. it's powerful. My gosh. Is, yeah. It was huge. You know, um, James 4.10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Yep, amen. You know, the song says, and he will lift you up <laughs> higher and higher, and he will lift you. Well, you know, the scripture says, you read it earlier, resist, uh, excuse me, uh, God resists the prideful. Yeah. So you got a choice. to the humble. You got a choice to make. Well, we got to come in for a close. Out of here? It's time to get out of here. Okay. So let them pray us out of here. And, All right. Uh, we are going to uh, let Mo and Noah get out of here because I was really late getting back from Miami. Yep, yep. And I appreciate y'all's grace. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for this wonderful thank evening, Lord. You, I thank you for my brothers giving, showing me grace because of me being late, Lord. Well, Lord, we thank you for just opening up, giving us this opportunity to spread your gospel, to do our part to help populate heaven and help set the captives free. Lord, you know our hearts. So, Lord, we thank you for blessing us this evening, Lord. Lord, I ask you to bless everybody that, that hears this podcast. Lord, they're the head, they're not the tail, they're always above and never beneath. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day for salvation. Today is the day for salvation. All you got to do is ask him into your heart, ask him to be Lord of your life, receive salvation, and he will show you the way. So, Lord, we thank you. We praise, praise you, Father. We honor you. We yes. glorify you. We Hallelujah. thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us. Yes, the Lord. Three, and sending your word to guide us on all truth. Yes. And sending your spirit to dwell inside of us, the very yes. best, your spirit to guide us and comfort us. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen, amen. You know what we always say? Who, Who the, the sun sets, sets free is free indeed. indeed. God bless each and every one of you. We'll see you next week. Amen.